Hi everybody, this is Bill, and I was not planning on going live uh, tonight, but I just finished the show and tell, and I didn't have enough time to get everything shown that I wanted to. So I thought I would uh, go ahead and um, see if I couldn't finish up what I was what I was showing uh, here, and then also talk about a project that we're doing this weekend that I'm sure some of you will be really, uh, really into. So uh, first things first. Um, let me share my screen for a second. Uh, this weekend, we are going to. Oh, one sec. There we go. This weekend, we are going to uh, go to uh, gun range with uh, Michael Phillips, and we are going to. Uh, there you go. And we are going to help him check uh, something off of his list of things to do. So, if if you don't know Michael Phillips, he is a wonderful person. He's been in our community, the AT community, for a long time. He's in his 30s. Uh, he's an outspoken uh, advocate for a lot of different things, AT being one of them. He has spinal muscular at atrophy type 1, which is the very severe form of that. And um, we are going to uh, be working with him on Saturday at 2 o'clock. We are going to go try and check off this thing off his list of things to do. His, this is not a bucket list so much as it is a list of things he wants to do. And there's an item right here, fire a gun with a switch. There's a lot of things on this list that I can't help him with, but I can help him fire a gun with a switch. So I did not involve, just so you guys don't think I'm crazy, I did not involve uh, any of the teens in this project. I, I know better than to suggest this to the high schools. Uh, but I'm delighted with how this is turning out. So, and I've kept it quiet until I was sure it was all going to work. So, uh, a couple things I will show you. Um, we have, well, I could, I could hold it up, but I think it's probably better if I, if I use the other camera. One second. All right. So, we have a gun rest. Now... Just to explain what you're looking at, this is a Glock 17 9 millimeter. It's a real gun. Uh, it is safe. There's nothing in it. There's no clip in it, and the, the chamber's empty. I've checked it. Don't worry. Uh, it is sitting in a ransom rest, and what the ransom rest does, um, this is a device that uh, holds it safely for sighting in. So if you're trying to, to get your sights aligned perfectly, um, it, it helps out with that. It's also very good for testing a gun repeatedly. You've probably seen it used on Mythbusters for whenever they're doing a, a shoot or that kind of stuff. Um, that's what these devices are made for. And it's actually one of the, one of the big problems with this kind of project is um, it, it's not, um, this is the part that I worry about, is can we hold the gun safely? Can we mount it to the platform safely? Uh, pulling the trigger, I'm pretty sure I can automate. So we did. Um, I... I'm very happy <laughs> with how this came out. Um, Ransom, to give him a lot of credit, Ransom International, Chuck Ransom's company, um, has been fabulous. They Not only did they send us uh, a device to use for this, uh, this is a, the, a Ransom Rest, it's an it's a old one, it's a classic one. They sent us Chuck Ransom's. This is the one that he originally created for himself before he patented it, before he started the company. Um, they sent it. He's, he passed away a few years ago, but their new CEO has, has sent this to us for six weeks, and it's turned into eight weeks, uh, which is, is fabulous. Um, and they're going to put a plaque here with the folks who use it. They, they've been very gung ho about making this happen for Mike, and I got to thank him for that. Um, so what we've done here is this is a regular ransom rest. It is attached via a chain to an arm here that is on a servo. It's a very powerful digital servo. And over here, you'll see there is a Raspberry Pi 3 uh, with a camera. And so the camera sights directly down uh, the gun and, and allows Mike to fire the gun. It's safe. Uh, we went yesterday and tested this with a friend of ours, um, Marshall and Jackie. And uh, this worked great. I got to thank the folks at the local gun range who also um, have done uh, a great job uh, of supporting us on this. So... Uh, I want to show you a little bit about how uh, how we make this work. Um, this again is the gun, uh, but this is what's important, and this is the the lesson that I learned that I think is really uh, worthwhile. Um, this is the interface that Michael have when he fires the gun. 
And this right here in the center is a live camera view that looks down at the site. Um, and on the left, there's a, a button which will arm the, the gun, and the second one will fire the gun. That way, it can't be done by mistake. Uh, so some safety factors for us there. And then um, this is something that, that the takeaway is when you're paralyzed, when you've got a degenerative disease, you kind of always have a way to surf the net, right? It is such a connection point nowadays that one of the, one of the key things, one of the things people want to give up the least and they work the hardest for is they will find a way to navigate a browser. They'll use, in the case of Mike, he's using um, an eyebrow. Or that, that it's not actually moving, but the, the neuro switch that he's using can sense the attempt to move his eyebrow. Um, in, in the case of, um, in the case of uh, Jim uh, Lubin, he's using a, a sip and puff device. Uh, everybody's got a way to, to browse the, the net, browse the web. And so if you can't get any other switch, because I was really worried about how to get the, the interface, how to get the switch onto this so that uh, Mike could use it. But he can use a web browser, and so if I can give him a web interface on top of the device we made, um, that will work. So uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to this. We will go live on Saturday um, afternoon, and uh, it hopefully will be um, uh, will be awesome. I'm pretty sure it will be. I'll edit some film together afterwards and put something up on YouTube for those of you who can't watch us live on Facebook or don't want to be on Facebook, which I totally get. Um, but it will um, it, it will be awesome. So that'll be on uh, Saturday afternoon, live on Facebook, and then posted later on YouTube because I can't figure out how to do them both at the same time. Uh, I've tried. It failed. I don't want to fail anymore. So how do we actually make this work uh, technically? We use the Raspberry Pi, as I showed, uh, with a servo. And in this case, we could cheat. We just went straight to the GPIO. We used the interface called uh, PigPIO, which made it work. But it's kind of limiting. You're, you're not going to be able to do a lot of different, um, a lot of different uh, control points uh, using that. And it turns out that our friends at Adafruit are, um, are right in the middle of a big push with a new board they have called a Cricut. So uh, I also... I, I think I'm going to use this approach more often. So I want to be able to take a Raspberry Pi, and this is a Raspberry Pi Zero. Sorry, let me move this over here. A Raspberry Pi Zero, I want to be able to have it on here and have it connect to, among other things, this Cricut. So what I, I don't, it wasn't originally designed for the Cricut. It was designed for any feather wing. So if I wanted a relay that came in feather format, but I wanted to control it by a Raspberry Pi, I wanted a way to do that. So I came up with this board. All right, this is a, a PCB board. I had it made by, um, by PCBWay. It's one of the things I used to test their service before I agreed to, uh, or kind of after, but as I am agreeing to do some, some uh, judging for them on their contest, I wanted to make sure that uh, the PCBs they made were good. And this one was great. And it was three days and it was like $5 for 10 of them. Plus shipping total was like 25 bucks. Um, so I had these made last week. And what they do is they break out all of the pins, all the common pins, pins for the Feather, and all the pins for the uh, Raspberry Pi. And they allow you to connect them as you wish. So let me show you one that is kind of wired up. So if I wanted to use, for example, this is a, a Feather Wing. Uh, that's an OLED display. It's an I squared C device, which basically means it talks to standard protocol. Um, I'm going to pull this off, and you'll see that this plugs into my interface board, which then plugs into the Raspberry Pi. So it passes through uh, the I squared C signal, uh, three volts, five volts, and ground from one device to the other. Um, you'll see that there's also the ability here to jumper. Uh, any pins that you want. So in this case, I also wanted to be able to put um, this latching, this non-latching, uh, sorry, this latching feather wing um, on the Pi. So in this case, it actually uses two pins to do that. It doesn't use I squared C. So I need to be able to pass these two pins into the Raspberry Pi. I simply need to run two little jumpers from here to here. And now when I plug this in, 
it will have uh, pins 24 and 25 will map into pins A2 and A3, which lets me control this thing from this thing. So this wasn't originally a Cricut project, but man, it really worked out. I'll show you. See, this is a Cricut, uh, this bottom hexagonal or octagonal, octagonal shape board. Um, it's great. This is an amazing little robotics board they made. Uh, it can control four servos. Um, it's got eight um, analog or digital input-output um, sections over here. It's got four capacitive touch tabs. It's got a NeoPixel output, a speaker output, uh, the ability to drive a, um, a, ser a um, either two DC motors or one uh, stepper motor. And then it's got four syncing uh, inputs or syncing outputs, the ability to, to drive higher voltages here. So it's got like everything you would need to do any robotics project on here. Uh, and it's meant to be uh, coupled with a feather. In this case, it's got a feather footprint on here. So I didn't want to use a feather. I wanted to use a Raspberry Pi. And so I cheated and, uh, and I made the, the interface that goes between them. And I did have to run one wire here to get five volts up to the board. And I'd love to hear from Lady Ado why she didn't send five volts up. I know there's a reason. I know there's probably a pretty good one, but it's a, it's a pain. At the very least, I'd like to have a solder point where I can get five volts so I don't have to use the screw terminal. But um, let me show you kind of how it works. Um, I'm going to go to a test page here and turn this on and me off. All right. So here's a web interface that, that I made for this. And as you can see, there's a nifty red uh, LED light right there. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and so as I go here on the, on the interface, um, let me refresh this page. Get my mouse down here, all right. So um, as I hit green, it'll change it to green. Blue will change it to blue. I can go in search for, I don't know, a neat uh, yellow and it will change the light on the Cricut. So the, the reason that this works is that the Cricut is a, um, is a uh, I squared C device and I'm passing through all the I squared C uh, signals. Uh, the great people over there have um, already kind of done a lot of the work for me because they, they ported the, the, Python, the Python libraries that they're using for CircuitPython uh, they ported to Raspberry Pi Python as well. In fact, I think they might have done those first. I'm not sure. But um, it works great. And so, so for output, I can now control this board. There's no wires connecting it. It's a Wi-Fi board. This is just power. Uh, and it's on my, my local network. And so if I want to change things, I can. Right. So I can go in here and hit blue, green, or red. It all works. You'll also see this right-hand side. So this is to prove the fact that we can also send information back and so what I have right here is I actually have a potentiometer, a pot, that as I turn it, you'll see that my web page is going up and down. And um, this is kind of a big deal on a couple levels. First, it really proves that we can get bi-directional information in and out of the Raspberry Pi using the Cricut. Uh, when they are, they are gonna come out with a Raspberry Pi version of the Cricut, um, which will make, um, it will make my board unnecessary in this case, but if you want to use any other feathers, the board I just made will still be really handy. Uh, so so I'm, it's open source. You can make one or ask me. I'll get you one. Uh, but the other thing that's really important about this is that the Raspberry Pi has no analog inputs and outputs. So the Cricut now gives you an analog input and output, right? It gives you um, high driver outputs. It's got, it gives you the ability to control a lot more and you have the the best thing about the um, about the Pi is this interface. It's it's a web interface. You can do it with Python or Ruby or PHP or raw C. You can run Apache or Nginx or any of the things that you might want to use. You've got gigabytes of space, gigabyte a gigabyte of RAM. You're not talking about will it fit in my 4K feather or my 128K new feather, right? You're, you've got a lot more power, and these are ten bucks, right? I think the the uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero W is ten dollars, which makes this combination very very powerful and affordable. So um, I'm going to check real quick and see if I got any questions. I don't think I will. 
um, and I don't think I do. Uh, I have learned to go actually check um, and see without looking at the, the page because sometimes there's questions here, but there aren't any, so that's good. So that's what I'm up to for, for those of you who are watching in the, um, in the uh, Adafruit show. It gives you enough time to actually see what, what this looks like. I will post in here the, the links to the GitHub repository. Um, and then if you watch the, the Facebook group on Saturday, that's where you'll see uh, the gun project. Uh, lots of thanks to Reload um, uh, Gun Center, Gun Range here in Tarpon Springs, Florida, which is amazing. Uh, Eric Carson and Jackie and Marshall, who helped us test this. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So as always, good luck, have fun, and see you later.